Uh, in a sense, this talk is uh, it's the second half of my talk in the morning. Okay. Uh, after I said that, you will not be surprised. I, now I tell you the conclusion uh, of this talk is uh, I don't think probability theory provide a, a proper <coughs> theoretical foundation for EGI. Uh, since the full text of my paper is already online, uh, linked from the schedule, uh, I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, instead, I will, I will focus on uh, the two points raised by the two previous uh, speakers. Uh, for, for Marcus' talk, I'm going to explain why uh, my system is not an approximation of his model. Uh, for Ben, uh, I'm going to explain why I think uh, consistency cannot be assumed, even approximately. Uh, so first, uh, for, for uh, AXI and NARS, actually there are a lot of things we agree with each other, which I want to quickly summarize. Okay. Uh, I think the most important thing is both me and Marcus try to find a unified theory. Uh, of intelligence and also to see intelligence not as defined by human, concrete human uh, brain structure or behavior, but instead by some kind of principle of rationality or uh, optimization, which actually is not, uh, I believe, shared by most of the AGI researchers. So I fully agree with what Mark, uh, Marx just said about the, the need for uni unified theory and the elegant uh, formal model. And also a bunch of other things. Uh, beliefs are uncertain, and we prefer simple uh, models over complicated ones, and so on. Uh, the disagreement, I think, uh, one way to summarize it uh, is to use uh, one sentence, if we have to use one sentence. Uh, the right one is uh, Marcus' sentence, uh, uh, so that he's looking for uh, optimum solution uh, or action based on the simplest world model consistent with a history of, of the system. On the other hand, my um, summer uh, approach or uh, goal of research is to looking for optimum solution based on available knowledge and resource. Okay. Uh, so you see there are very uh, different assumptions uh, about what, what's the restriction under which uh, uh, optimization uh, are carried out. And this actually, there are a whole bunch of impl uh, implications. Actually, uh, if you compare it uh, in detail, we actually uh, assume very different environment for the system. We assume the different uh, experience the, uh, the system get. Uh, we assume different uh, models for the degree uh, of beliefs. And we assume very different initial degree of belief <coughs> and how to evaluate the system's action. And we assume very different uh, resource supply situation uh, within the system. Uh, clearly, to actually uh, fully explain those difference, it takes much longer time than what I can do here. So instead of talking about all of them, I will concentrate on two points. Uh, one is uh, <coughs> Occam's razor, uh, which is a uh, cornerstone of uh, the AXI model and the related work. Okay. Uh, I actually also agree with it in a certain version. You see, we need to be very careful about this thing. Okay. Uh, at least to me, there's three different interpretations of what we call Occam's razor. Okay. Uh, the original version is uh, just simply simple hypothesis uh, preferred, which I agree. No problem about that. Uh, the second version, which I believe is the version accepted by Solomonov and Marcus and other people, many other people, is actually say that simple hypotheses are preferred since or because they are more likely to be correct. To me, that's a different hypothesis. Okay? And my uh, take is simple hypotheses are preferred since the system has insufficient resource. That's also a very different reading uh, of the, the same thing. That is why you want something uh, to be simple. So to me, I don't really say that uh, uh, Marcus' uh, hypothesis is, is wrong. I just say it's a hypothesis. You need to justify it. It's not self-evident. 
And also, I don't think we can say it's the original form of, of Occam's reason. Uh, and also, in the, in the paper, I argue that in certain situations, you cannot assume simple things are more likely to be, to be correct. For a GI in general, uh, I'm not making that assumption. <coughs> So that if some other model make that assumption, that's okay, but you need to list that as an assumption you're making. So that's for this point. Uh, another point uh, for resource. Uh, it's well known that uh, AI is based on the assumption of uh, infinite resource, and my model, NARS, is based on insufficient resource. Uh, to me, that uh, Marcus just suggests, you know, uh, you can idolize the situation by using uh, infinite resources as a golden standard, then everyone else using uh, any time algorithm to approach that as an approximation. Uh, I see it in a very different way. Uh, to me, that uh, this two assumptions actually define two completely different problems. Okay. Uh, one reason, well, there's a, there will be a long discussion about that, but one reason is a lot of human cognitive mechanism are developed completely because of insufficiency of resource. If you assume you can do exhaustive search, a lot of things doesn't even exist or doesn't even need to exist in the first place. Okay. Most of the complexity of my work come from, you know, I have to de uh, design a system which can probably survive and work reasonably well when resource is in short supply. Then uh, the suggestion will be, for example, if NARS is used only limited resource, if you give it more resource, of course it will provide better answer. Uh, I explained that in the morning, right? It's similar to any time algorithm. When you give it more resource, it will work better. That's for sure. But uh, why we cannot <laughs> say that uh, if you give it an infinite number of resource, amount of resource, uh, why not uh, converge to AIXI? Well, you see here, I said, I don't really know. I don't know, really know whether NARS will convert to AIXI or not. Because frankly speaking, <coughs> I don't really care. Why? Because to me, uh, to be able to work with insufficient resource is a defining property for a system to be intelligent. If I, in some very special situation, I somehow gave the system sufficient resource, to me, the system doesn't need the intelligence anymore, okay? In that situation, what's the behavior of the system that is <coughs> irrelevant with respect to my design, which is, all consideration is about the so-called normal situation. The normal situation is a situation where you do not have the resource to do exhaustive search, okay? <coughs> so because of that, uh, I, I basically say that uh, I think to a large extent, uh, Marcus and, and me, and we are actually working on different problems. Uh, even though the problem have a relation with each other, I, I can learn from his work uh, and so on. I don't think whether my model will convert to his model uh, really matters as a, a standard to evaluate uh, whether my model is properly designed. And then the second issue, uh, consistency and risk. Actually, uh, I agree with Ben's technical conclusion. Okay? I just do not agree with his assumption. Let's see, first let me clarify uh, my position on consistency. Number one, I'm not saying consistency is bad. Consistency, of course, is desired. It's always a good thing. Okay? And also, myself, I always try to be consistent, and, which is also true for my system. Okay. NARS is always trying its best to maintain consistency, to resolve, uh, resolve inconsistency, and so on, when it's running. Okay. And also, I agree with Ben that approximately consistent for practical purposes, you already good enough. That, that's also not an issue. And finally, I'm not taking this as an excuse for the inconsistency of my own theory. Okay. If, just because I cannot be properly consistent, I say consistency is a bad thing. I'm not saying any of those. What I'm saying is inconsistency is inevitable in a GI system in general. Okay? Because 
first, if you have a degree of belief, okay, what that thing measures. In my paper, I explain in detail uh, the only meaningful interpretation of probability theory in the context of AGI is some kind of logical interpretation, meaning that probability measures the, <coughs> the degree of evidential support. That is, your de degree of belief based on what evidence you have. Okay. If we take that interpretation of probability theory, then I argue you cannot be always consistent. Why? Number one, new knowledge. New knowledge come to the, uh, to the system all the time, which may come from a different knowledge uh, evidential base. It's not necessarily consistent with what you already know. Actually, inconsistency in that aspect is a major driving force for learning. Okay, you learn new things. You, you see things not expected conf conflict with your previous knowledge, and you re adjust your belief system. So if new information is always perfectly consistent with what you already know, and then a lot of learning will not happen in the first place. And also, in this case, you cannot even limit the extent of inconsistent. You cannot say that, I don't know about the future, but they will be probably close to what I believe right now. You cannot even assume that. Okay. And second one is for resource. If you are really doing Bayesian conditioning, by principle, whenever you have a new a piece of new evidence, you should recalculate all the belief, or, or almost all of them, or all the relevant one, which can be a huge number, even if it's not everything. I don't think any practical AGI system can afford the resource to do that calculation. Okay, I don't think any human being can afford that resource to do the calculation. That is, whenever you read a new book or you get a new piece of information, you reevaluate all of your relevant beliefs. That will never happen in any system. Okay. So because of that, each belief basically in such a system will have its own evidential base. And since, uh, beliefs based on different evidential support may have different, uh, may have different degree of belief, and that inconsistency may be as large as any, uh, larger than any, say, epsilon you can assume. Okay. You cannot limit that. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion, once again, probability is good. The probability theory is good. But its application is limited. It's applicable only when the resource and the knowledge requirement are satisfied. Okay. If you have the knowledge to set up a prior probability, and if you have the resource to do Bayesian conditioning to maintain it, then you use probability. Okay. The problem is, in most of the situations, they don't. And how about approximation? Well. I don't think we can call any violation approximation. If you don't use probability theory, if the axioms cannot be satisfied, and you still use the probability theory, you can do that, but you cannot justify your conclusion anymore, unless you can give an accurate range of error or approximation rate. Okay. Otherwise, you are not really following probability theory. So once again, uh, the conclusion is the one I proposed in the morning, that is, we need new models. That's all. Uh, before I ask all the speakers to come here, are there any technical questions for Peg? Well, I'm not sure if it's a technical question, but it, it, might, it might be. So, hey, do you, would you say that within NARS, Mm -hmm. The set of beliefs is probably approximately consistent. I mean, you you said the inconsistency could be greater than any epsilon, yeah. but that doesn't imply that it's not probably less than some epsilon, right? I, I don't know, and the system doesn't know. It just it cannot be guaranteed. It, that's what I'm saying. It just uh, you know <coughs> if this uh, if you calculate the same. Uh, degree of belief for the same statement, 
according to different two paths of reasoning, if you are using different evidence, the conclusion may be the exact opposite of each other. It may be, but if you analyze an existing knowledge system in real life, doing a real thing uh -huh. over time and kept a record of all its well, beliefs. I can clearly give you a concrete example where the conclusion one say yes, one the other one say no, zero. Yeah, that's that very easy to That hear. doesn't address, address the question of whether a real nervous system in real life would be probably approximately consistent. Whether most well, of the time it would be say this simple example. Assume you are in a certain situation where your uh, environment is manipulated by someone else. For a certain statement, uh, they first give you biased evidence which all support a certain conclusion. Then they switch to completely negative evidence, which are all uh, against that the same conclusion. Then you are going to run into an inconsistency, which can be very big. Yes, but that's a weird situation. That doesn't answer the question about ordinary life. That's actually not a rare situation. Many people. Not in China. <laughs> <laughs> well, just think about this. When you uh, when you grow up in a certain culture. You move into a very different culture. You are a certain uh, point. Very, very often, you you see this kind of uh, strong confliction about what you see now and what you believe before. I don't think you can say, okay, the, the difference cannot be more than 0.5. Uh, anything well, like that. Probably approximately correct isn't about the difference cannot be more than 0.5. It's, it's that it's most of the time it's almost consistent. It doesn't it doesn't rule out occasionally having wild inconsistencies. Well, you need to be accurate. Then what do you mean by most of the time and approximately and so on? I see the intuition. I know that if the inconsistency is too big, uh, the system will, will, will go crazy, okay? It will be crashed down. I fully agree. And that's actually probably the reason of some people go crazy. It's just you cannot in logic Assume that kind of thing will never happen to your system you know, by design. You cannot assume. No, I, I don't think you can. That's why I pose the question empirically for an actual NARS system in real life. Well, if you studied well, the consistency of its beliefs as it went about its ordinary life, not not for our course. ordinary life. Can you assume that we never run into that situation where a new information completely challenged our belief system? Can we assume that will never happen? No, but I think that for most people who are not crazy their beliefs about most things they encounter in life are probably approximately consistent. Oh, yeah. I, I think, that, I think that, that may holds. be true. Yeah. But if, I don't think we can design an ADI system based on that assumption. But even if people obey that, you don't think you can design an AI system based on that? Well, if we obey that, that basically means you, we are lucky so far. Well, I agree that the architecture could become wildly, like OpenCog could become wildly inconsistent if you put it in the wrong environment or tried to drive yeah. it insane. Yeah. But I don't think it would become wildly inconsistent well, in, in, the, in the appropriate ways of, of raising it. And probably, it the yeah, I see, that's a reality. But the, now the problem is, can you design your inference rules according to the assumption that uh, it's dealing with a belief uh, distribution which is approximately consistent? Can you assume that? I don't think how you, you can justify that. It's designed so that it would work well in, in, in the case where, where its life experience will let it be probably approximately consistent. And I didn't try to design it to work well in a completely insane situation. <coughs> no, I think I don't have more of that. <laughs> OK. Um, so uh, yeah, you have another question? Uh, am I right that uh, you told more or less uh, uh, that uh, Salmon conduction is uh, wrong? What is wrong? Uh, Salmon conduction. No, I don't think it's wrong. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I just say it's uh, limited to a certain situation. Oh, yeah, that, that reminds me of another technical question. <laughs> 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 is it no. typical as the last one? Or? More, more, more technical, okay. actually. Probably. Because my question <laughs> is, <laughs> there are theorems that you probably know in, in, in statistics which, which show that if you have a bunch of models induced from, from some data, then the, and the more compact models are less likely to be overfit to the training data and to extrapolate to the testing data, right? So if, if you take like a million data items 
and induce a pattern from half of them, and there are many, many patterns at work, the smaller ones are more likely to actually hold in the other half of the data. So uh, that, yes, that seems like an actual foundation for Occam's razor to me. But, uh, but most of those kind of proofs are based on uh, the assumption that those data uh, follow a certain, maybe unknown probability distribution. If you don't, if you cannot assume that, I don't think you can prove anything. You can. You don't need to. You don't need to make a distributional assumption for, for that. Don't mean a proof. Okay. I mean that's all non-parametric.